this recording, we will learn about the basic formula for pricing a class, the types of expenses we'll have, how to calculate sunk costs, go no go and break even, a little bit about margins, and the mind game of numbers. Let's start out by looking at the basic formula for calculating the price of a class. The basic formula for pricing a class is expenses plus margin divided by the number of students equals the price of a class. Of course, this is a simplified version of the formula. Margin is the amount of money we would like to make after expenses on the class. Margin is hard to figure out in the formula because we won't know the number of students that will show up and register for the class. We estimate this as part of the formula. The number of students in a class is really just a guess. Generally, when we're trying to figure out a price for the class, we use the formula with a low number of students, a high number of students, and we also calculate kind of the middle of the road number of students. So we can get a good estimate as we're figuring out the price of the class. Expenses are made up of three different types that we will talk about later. It's important to capture all the expenses charged to the class so we can get an accurate price. Once you have your expenses, an idea of margin, and an estimate of number of students, you will have a price for your class. This is probably the minimum price you can charge for the class, and other considerations should be taken into account when coming up with the final price. We will look at some of these considerations in a bit. Let's take a look at expenses. The goal of expenses is to capture all of the expenses so that our pricing for the workshop or certificate is correct. Expenses can be broken down into three types. Direct expenses, indirect expenses, and student expenses. It's important to capture all these expenses so that the price of the class or certificate reflects the true cost of production. The first type of expense are direct expenses. These are expenses directly related to running the class. If the class doesn't run, these expenses are not incurred. Examples of direct expenses include instructor pay, room rental, instructor insurance, and copies. Indirect expenses are associated with running your program but cannot be attributed to any one class or certificate. These could include staff costs, overhead to the college, program space, general marketing, copier rental, software or computer purchase, purchases, or general travel. There's other types as well. So these costs need to be captured and assigned to your classes but aren't associated with any particular class. The last type of expense is student expenses. These are direct costs that are per student. For example, instructor pay when paid per student, books, liability insurance, and possibly food and snacks. For each additional student you have, the cost goes up. Do not confuse with student fees, which the student pays. Let's take a closer look at indirect expenses. I'll show you a couple ways that you can calculate indirect expense. The first way is to divide your total yearly indirect expense by the number of hours of successfully programmed hours. For example, if you had $550,000 of indirect expense and you had four, divided that by 4,500 hours of successful programming, you would end up with $122 per hour of overhead. That means a three-hour workshop would need to have a $366 expense factored into its budget for overhead. The pros of this is it's easy to calculate an expense number to assign to a class. Unfortunately, long programs pay a lot of overhead. Another way to calculate indirect expense is to take the same total of overhead expenses for the year and divide by the number of classes instead of by the number of hours. 
So an example would be if you had $850,000 of indirect expense and divided it by 1,200 workshops, you'd have $708 of back office expense per workshop program. This quickly captures the expense but is unfair to shorter or cheaper programs. Neither method by itself gives us a very good idea of how much to charge each of our classes or certificates for back office expense or indirect expense. So what is the best way? Well first you want to make sure you know your cost numbers. Use the two methods and come up with a number and use any other methods you feel comfortable with. Make sure your programming staff knows these various cost numbers. Come up with a system that's easy for everyone to use. Just don't ignore your indirect expenses. They can come back to bite you later. You can look like you have a very successful program and end up negative on your profit because you didn't take your indirect expenses into account. And be flexible on how you apply them. My suggestion, have a per hour rate that's less than the actual number along with a maximum that is charged to any specific workshop or program. Adjust that number over time to account for changes in expenses and to make the accuracy pro better. This worked for me for many years. Now let's take a look at calculating the price. Our goal here is to calculate a price that covers expenses, makes a profit, but is still reasonable to the customer. With pricing, it's important to know a few important concepts. The first is the go, no go number. The go, no go number is the minimum number of students needed to run the class. This student number covers the direct cost of the class, which includes things like instructors pay. It doesn't cover indirect costs. If we make our go, no go number, we will run the class as we cover the instructors pay. The indirect costs are already been spent and are already lost. If we cover the direct costs, we will run the class to keep the customer happy. The break-even number is the number of students or registrations it takes to cover all expenses. After the, we hit the break-even number, every registration after that point is profit. We need to keep some other things in mind when setting the price of a class. What have we got? What's the average registration price for the class of this type? What have we charged for these types of classes in the past? What are your competitors charging? What are the average number of students you've had in the past for this type of class? How much marketing being done for this class? And what is the reputation of the instructor? All these things will impact the pricing of your class. There are some hints and tricks to calculating the price. Remember to round to the nines. You don't want to leave money on the table. And to most people, a five is no different than a nine. 99 is always better than 109. Once you cross over the $100 barrier, the 100 is a real barrier. So is 1,000. So if you're going to go over, go over. $99 or jump to 119, 129, 139. Forget the 99 cent thing, people find it tacky. Use variable pricing. If the class will support it, make the price higher. Don't base your prices just on the number of hours. Remember that most classes need to make, most programs need to make a 40% margin, if not more to turn a profit. Look at your margin on classes after the end of each quarter. If you're not making enough margin because you're not getting the enrollment, you may need to make adjustments. And finally, never lower a class price until you try other ways to increase enrollment. Lowering the class price just means you need more enrollment to meet your go, no, go, and break even numbers. So let's do it. Let's take a look at how we can price a class. I'm going to use student managers budgeting software to look at pricing a standard workshop. Okay, so I'm in Student Manager and I've created this class, Joy of Painting Landscapes. It's 16 hours long. And I'm going to go into the budget area. So first thing I'm going to do is make a guess at some fees based on my experience. So I've got a registration fee, 
and uh, an estimate of the students, an early bird fee, and uh, estimate of the registrations. And I can go down here and see by putting those numbers in, uh, start to see uh, my break, break even profit and loss. I'm going to go and I've entered in a per person expense or a student expense. And those are expenses that I have that are totaled up each time there's a registration. So every student that signs up, I'm charged $12 of expense. I'm going to go under the expense tab and I've entered in all my major direct expenses and indirect expenses. So my direct expenses include instructor salary, benefits, and a model fee. And I've also in, inserted my indirect expense, and I've calculated for my hypothetical school here that to be $400 for this class. And that's marked as a sunk expense, because remember, those are gone. Uh, it's not going to be part of my go-no-go. So I can go now to what if actuals, and if you look at the bottom, this is all filled out, and based on my fee setup, uh, and the fees that I put in, I can see that my go-no-go no go is 6.3 and my break-even is 8.4 uh, based on my estimate of 20 enrollments. Okay. Now, what I can do with Student Manager is I can play with the, the registration fee and enrollments and try some different what-if scenarios based on the expenses I put in. So what if I only get 10 students? At $199, I'm going to have um, uh, a profit and a loss of $294. So it looks like I still make money. But what if I change my, decide that fee is too high and I'm, I'm looking at $149? Then I notice my break even is 11.5 and my go no go is 8.5. So one of the things you want to do is try to get your go-no-go no go down to a smaller number so that you can run the class no matter what. The important thing when pricing a class is to price it so it'll run so that you're not disappointing your students. In my opinion, your cancel rate should be 15% or less uh, on, on non-new classes. If you're cancel rate gets too much higher, you can start to damage your program because people won't sign up for classes because they just figure you're going to cancel them. So you want to play with the numbers here until you get a good number where you feel your enrollment's accurate and you have a good number at that enrollment um, uh, and your go, no go and, and break even seem logical. Uh, what does logical mean? It means your go, no go, and break even seem to match what you normally do uh, with previous history. Once you have that fee calculated, you can go back to fee setup and put those numbers in to get even more detailed break even and profit calculations. And then finally, we would go back in the student manager um, and set those those fee calculations under fees in our program, we could insert those in so that they would be printed and be available to use on our online registration. That's all there is to it. Good luck.